that a small segment of the DNA would be known as what? A small segment of the DNA would be always known as a gene. What is the definition of the word gene? A segment of a DNA, segment of a DNA that controls a character. Segment of a DNA that controls a character, rather. Segment of a DNA that produces a protein. And that protein controls a character. So we are going to start from here. That every particular segment of the DNA that we understand, every particular, now the entire chromosome may be made up of hundreds and hundreds of genes like this. Every particular gene is going to code for a particular protein. What is the meaning of code for a particular protein? It has the information to make a protein. So every particular gene has the information to make a protein and then regulate a character. Let us talk about what is the full form of DNA. Where did I talk? Yesterday, rather than did I write deoxyribonucleic acid. What is the full form of DNA? Note it down. Anybody still have a confusion? Deoxyribonucleic acid. It is acidic. It is an acidic macromolecule. Deoxyribonucleic acid. That is the full form of DNA always to remember. Now we start talking about the concept of genes and alleles here. I said every particular gene of the chromosome would be carrying information to make a protein. Would contain information to make a protein. Now this information to make a protein is actually what is the under uh, is actually what I can also say as regulating a character. Now for example, let us talk about an example to talk about character so you understand. Uh, when I'm talking about a character, I may talk about an example of a character, something like, uh, I said genes are regulating a character, but now if I talk about an example of a character, very simple, with few forms, uh, I will talk about eye color of the human population. Now this eye color of the human population, when I think of as a simple character, a very simple character, yeah. Uh, are you aware how many types of eye color the human population has? Hong Kong say orange, green, blue, pink, 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 brown, black, brown, black, blue, brown, black, blue, no, hazel. green, hazel, and hazel, and red, all these are yeah, mutant types. All these are mutant types. So, when you are talking about the combination of the colors, remember these are all mutant. So we are not going, we never consider them as normal items. They are not, mutant color means whenever uh, there is a change in the DNA and then the eye color. These are not mutant eye colors. So what are the normal eye colors to talk about? The normal eye colors would only be brown, black, blue. These are the normal eye colors where the gene does not show any change and then the eye color. So now that I talk about the eye color as a character, uh, what are the different forms of the eye color? The different forms of the eye color would be brown and then black and then uh, blue. So talk about the different forms of uh, normal eye color in human population. So I'm saying a particular gene regulating a character, but this character that I choose has got different forms. Uh, so what are these different forms uh, known as? I would say these different forms are actually known as Traits of this character. So there are different traits of this character. Then what is the definition of the word traits? Uh, traits means different forms of a character. Traits means different forms of a character. I would say if I, if I would have picked up an example of the hair structure, the hair texture, uh, then I would have said examples like uh, extremely wavy, extremely curly, first to talk about, then curly, then wavy, uh, then uh, uh, we talk about moderately, uh, wavy and then we talk about straight, extremely straight hair. So there are many terms to designate. Then we talk about the skin color, the skin tone also, so many different shades. So I talk about skin color as a character and the tones are different. So all these tones, if I have to speak about, the extremely dark and then dark and then the average dark and then the moderate dark and then beaches and various shades. And then we talk about the fair. So all these varieties that I'm talking about would be the traits of skin color. Uh, so if I talk about beige and dark and fair, is this character or these are traits? These are traits. Then what is a character? Height is a character. 
texture of the hair is a character, color of the eye is a character, the shape of the fingers is a character, the length of the bones is a character, but the varieties of this character is what we are talking about as traits. And what is the first definition now to talk about? I talk about a pair of terms. What is this first pair of term I'm talking about? The first pair of term is character and traits. What is character? Any distinctive feature of human, any distinctive form, feature, function of human uh, population that I'm talking about. And what is the definition of the word character? Character can be considered as the form, function, and behavior of an individual. Form, function, or behavior. Uh, again, remember, when I'm talking about behavior, Again, when I talk about behavior, is it that behavior is something that uh, only because our upbringing something this way or we are in a particular environment? No, exactly. When I talk about behavior, uh, we all of us, we have got strong likes and dislikes. Why like that? Because mostly because of the genes and the ethics that we have in our proposals, not because our en environment or the family, absolutely. Not 100% because of the environment or the family, but quite a big impact is because of the genes that we have. Okay, so now that I talk about the form, what is the meaning of the form? I have written character means form, function, behavior. Form, form uh, the shape of the nose and the ears and the height, etc. Form. Uh, function, uh, the function of the cells, the type of the enzymes or bones, pigments, function. Yeah? And then behavior, when I talk about behavior, then what it should be? Behavior would be our strong dislikes or our particular behavioral feature like, um, uh, say suppose I talk about uh, good analytic power or good reasoning. Or I talk about, uh, 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 for example, I would understand a person loves uh, a particular type of a sport. A person does not love uh, the purple color at all. A person does not love to read at all. A person is very much fond of certain type of a sport. A person is very good in music. So all this comes under the concept of behavioral. It is not only the impact of the environment, that's what I told you. So character is something that you understand this way. What is character Character of an individual? All these categories as an example. But whether I talk about any particular character, now that I picked up an example of the eye color, eye color in the human population are in variable forms. So since the eye color are in variable forms, since the eye color are in variable forms, so we would understand that since the eye color are in variable forms, yeah. so also the form of the gene which regulates the eye color. So there's a particular gene which is regulating the eye color. So I may say that, say suppose gene E is there which is responsible for the eye color. So this gene uh, should also be in variable forms now. So I say that this particular gene which is regulating the eye color, and since eye color has variable forms, so this gene also should have variable forms. So if I talk about some specific, okay, let me not take E for confusion, I may consider B as the gene regulating eye color. So I would say that this particular gene also exists in variable forms. One is as it is, uh, another is this, and the other is this. Then what are these known as? These are known as alleles. I come again, try understanding. So I said, I started with the word gene when I said that gene is a small segment of the chromosome regulating a character. But talk about any character. I already gave you some five, six examples. Talk about any particular character. This particular character, you will not ask me at all. I will not explain it. Right at the beginning, I told you this is not like any other chapter. Jo Ratta Maan, Soko Ghe, Ratta Maan, Nye Pao Ghe, and you get all wrong in your answers. Suno Ghe Ne, Samjho Ghe Ne, already I'm explaining you twice, thrice. Uske Baad, they will not ask me any doubts. I'm not going to say the same thing again. I will not explain. So now, what did I tell you just now? Gene, a small segment of a chromosome, and this segment of the chromosome, straight away to remember, controlling a character. But controlling a character, pick up any example in human population. Character is not only one form. I give you already some examples. If I talk about the hair uh, texture, is it the same all of us? No. I talk about height, is it the same all of us? Not at all. I talk about the shape of the nails and the shape of the nose and the color of the eye, is it the same for all of us? Not at all. So we understand that talk about any particular character in human population or the plants or any other animal forms, 
they are not in the same form but they have got variable form so what are these variable forms of a character known as traits so if the character has variable forms the gene which is regulating the character should also have variable forms character is in variable forms so the gene which is regulating the character should also be in variable forms so these variable forms are always known as alias so come to this two pairs of terms first of all character and traits what is the relation variable forms of a character is known as traits the variable forms of a character known as traits so also the variable forms of a gene are known as alias a gene will have variable forms of course why should the gene have variable forms because the character has got variable forms and what are the variable forms of a character known as traits and what are the variable forms of a gene known as alias understanding now we try understanding certain situation and uh, rest of the definitions exactly here i'm trying to come across uh, four to five different situations i talk about a pair of chromosome maybe uh, the third uh, chromosome pair of human individuals five individuals i talk about this is the pair of chromosome this is the gene to understand the eye color and what about the, now this is a pair of chromosome remember i'm talking about the pair of chromosome the third pair and uh, this is the gene which is regulating the eye color uh, but look into the pair of chromosome is it necessary that all of us should have the same allele no or the pair of chromosome always should have the same allele no the combinations are something like this it may be this way are you able to see last bench if i write this or should i write it understanding or uh, maybe write it in bigger so that you understand what i'm writing the alleles especially see this thing should be very clearly understood so i'm talking about that uh, here in a pair of chromosome it is something like this uh, i come across that one individual has the gene this way uh, what is this gene for this is the gene uh, for the eye color i have taken up the same example i'm talking about the gene responsible for the eye color this is for the first individual i talk about the second individual now exactly the same gene to talk about and look into other alleles the same no the alleles are not the same now the alleles are something like this for the second person uh, are we able to see the alleles in our chromosome no we are not able to see the alleles in our chromosome but by the expression of the character we more or less assume this should have been or this must have been the combination we we'll learn so i'm saying in the third person in the third person it is something like this and uh, maybe in the fourth person uh, it is something like this now let us try to compare and conclude i'm saying third pair of chromosome with four individuals we compare third pair of chromosome with four individuals we compare only one particular gene we are comparing which gene we are comparing the gene responsible for the eye color in four individuals we are comparing and then uh, we try to first of all see how about the eye color that is expressed so in the first person we get to see that the eye color is brown in the second person we come across the eye color is brown in the third person we come across the eye color is brown in the fourth person we come across the eye color is blue uh, okay let me just talk about a situation when black uh, it would be black if it is something like this okay the eye color is black now why like this why like this so to try understanding all these situations and the definition should be very clear so i am talking about one individual where i see the brown eye color this person also the same brown eye color but we have studied their chromosomes and their alleles it is found that no the arrangement of the alleles in the gene are not the same but visibly externally they are the same no externally they are the same both have got the brown eye color so now sitting here again out of this 14 15 of us maybe another six or eight of us we will have brown eye color because brown eye color is the most dominant trait in the human population so far eye color is concerned 
uh, brown, brown eye color is the most dominant. So if I talk about a scale of 10, out of 10, six people, six individuals will definitely have a brown eye color, seven individuals will definitely have brown eye color. Uh, then again, one or two would be having the black eye color, two or three would be having the black eye color. What about uh, blue? Maybe, maybe not. I talk about maybe out of one, uh, one out of 50 may have the blue eye color. So why this blue eye color is so less and why the brown eye color is so because more to be found out? Why is it? Because brown gets, uh, the blue one gets only with blue one thing. Uh, I'll explain you this. So you should use the specific term. So now that we are talking about why in the human population we always understand blue is so rare and brown is so frequently found, so easily we come across brown eye colored people because this particular arrangement of the allele, just check here. Here is the allele for brownness. I have already talked about these three types of alleles. Now, if I talk about the allele for brownness, what is the allele for brownness? Capital B, let us assume. Allele for black, B, L. And allele for blue is small, small B. So, what did I say? What are traits? Variable forms of a character. For example, eye color, what are the traits? Black, blue. And we are assigning the alleles also now. But why did I choose B and all these? Uh, because basically the alleles are, genes are designated by letters or numbers or the name of the biologist who studied. So these are the patent way of naming a gene. So this is how we generally would always denote. So I'm saying capital B, let capital B the, uh, be, uh, be the gene responsible for the eye color. So this is one form of the gene. This is another, B, L, another, and small b, another. So this form is responsible for the blueness, this for the blackness, this for the brownness, correct? Now we talk about five individuals and check their chromosome pairs to know the G and, G and to know the G. And then we see that yes, the first and the second and the third person, all of them brown color. Are their allele combination the same? No, we see that the allele combination of the first one is something like this. Two, Dissimilar alleles for a gene. Yes or no? Two contrasting alleles for a gene. Use the word contrasting here. What is the meaning of contrasting or dissimilar? They are not the same. Identical many uh, Is it the same? Yes. Now they are similar. Identical. So in this pair of chromosome for the second person, the alleles are identical for the gene. Alleles are similar. What about the third? Is it identical? Again, no. Dissimilar or contrasting. So, if it is something like this, alleles are dissimilar, uh, then what is the word we are supposed to use? We are supposed to say that the pair of chromosome is heterozygous for the gene. Heterozygous for the pair of alleles. The alleles are heterozygous, meaning what? Two alleles for a gene are not the same. Heterozygous. But at the same time, try understanding, can a pair of chromosome have three alleles at a time? No. You really? Two chromosomes only. Because when we are talking about chromosomes are two, but this gene has three at least. Ye tino ke tino ek hi individual ke body mein ho sakte hai kabhi? Never, never. Only two at a time will be possible. Why? Chromosome pairs meaning only two chromosomes. That is again mutation, uh, I mean, uh, absolute changes in the DNA molecule. That is different. That's a abnormality rather. That's not the normal eye color. So here in this topic, we are only talking about the normal conditions. A little bit about the abnormal mutation conditions also we will learn. So what I'm saying that three individuals right now sitting here may have brown eye color, but all of us doesn't have the same combination of ideas. Some of us this way. Some of us this way also perhaps, what we have inherited from our parents. Some of us this way also. So if the alleles are similar for a gene, then what will we say? This condition is known as a homozygous condition. Or is this known as a homozygous condition? What is the meaning of homozygous? Alleles for a gene are similar. Heterozygous? Alleles for a gene are dissimilar, contrasting. Alleles for a gene are similar. Then what will I write for this? Contrasting or say heterozygous. We'll learn the definitions. What do I write for this? Homozygous. Now I talk about homozygous here. And what about this one? 
heterozygous. Now, when I talk about the color of uh, the eye in all these conditions, see, this is also homozygous, we are saying, and this is also homozygous, we are saying. Is there any difference now to differentiate? Uh, I would say a person who is having blue eye color. Uh, yes, the person who is having blue eye color, can the person ever be heterozygous? No. A person who is having blue eye color cannot be heterozygous because this is a chemical composition which is the weakest in the entire chain, in the entire group. And this is the chemical composition which is the strongest and the more powerful, most powerful. Uh, take this and this together, now this is powerful. Then what am I talking about? I am saying, whenever we talk about a group of alleles, a particular gene may, uh, a particular gene ka three alleles ho sakta hai, five ho sakta hai, seven ho sakta hai, twenty ho sakta hai, twenty-seven ho sakta hai, and even more. So when I talk about a group of alleles, five of them together, seven of them together, nine of them together. So in this group of alleles, there is one allele which is always expressing. Koi bhi contrasting allele ke saath. They will always express. So, a type of an allele which expresses with every other allele is the most dominant. So, this is the most dominant in this group. Okay, why, why am I not saying that this is most dominant? No, because when it is in presence with this, it is not expressing. But when it is present with this, then it is expressing. This expresses only when it is with itself. So, this is known as the most recessive allele. Then what is the concept of a dominant and recessive? Now try understanding here. I would say that this is a combination known as homozygous dominant. Then what do we write here? Homozygous recessive. So what can be the two different combinations of uh, homozygous allele? Alleles which are homozygous can be either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Yes, I just gave you combinations. I may talk about this type of a combination also. Then what would be the eye color? Black. Then it will not be brown. Then it will be black. But why when uh, brown and black come together, then why the color is not black? Brown combination is more powerful. Brown is dominant than black. So what would be, what would be called homozygous? At the time, it is homozygous dominant because it is dominant to some other release. It is still dominant to some other release. But why not we talk about dominant for this? It is never expressed in presence of any other contrasting trait. It is expressing only with itself. So such type of allele is always termed as recessive. Yes. There are more colors, right? Like hazel and also hazel might be more, like blue might be more dominant than blue. But why don't I already told you with those different, there are another 18 to 20 different eye colors. But now why don't we talk about all these eye colors here? Because that does not come in the scale of normal eye colors. So suppose I talk about height. Now when I talk about human height, normal human height is still 6.1, 6.2. Beyond that, other individuals 6.5, 6.6, yes. But that is not the, not the normal height. So when we are talking about people suffering from gigantism, I talk about what is the normal height of human, uh, 4.5 at the lower level, 4.5. But other individuals who are having a height of 3.8, 3.9, yes. So when I talk about human height, I have to start from 4.5 to 6.2. So that is the normal height. No? Beyond that and beyond the higher level, we will not count. Here also, why am I only talking about this? Why am I not talking about all the 18? No, I will not talk about all the 18 because these are the abnormal eye colors. Yes, they are the abnormal eye colors. Mutants, when I say, these are the abnormal eye colors. So those eye colors doesn't come into the normal scale. But yes, definitely, when I talk about hazel or red or etc., those are recessive to this. But am I supposed to compare? No, I will not compare because only these are the normal eye colors in human population. I will not talk about the hair texture also. There are certain type of hair texture also away from the normal. So that doesn't come into the normal style. 
Chemical composition, when we have talked about this concept, that when we talk about the DNA made up of the other day, did I talk about the nitrogenous bases, phosphate, and the sugar? So, when we are talking about the DNA, which makes the reference to reproduction, also we have learned that the DNA is made up of certain chemical components, the nucleotides, and the nitrogenous base, pentose sugar. So, this chemical composition, little, 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 they are different. The chemical composition of this and the chemical composition of this and the chemical composition of this is a little bit different. I'm talking about the DNA molecule. The DNA entirely is nothing but a chemical composition. So the different, different chemical composition makes a molecule more dominant or expressive. And the little bit change in the chemical structure, chemical conformation makes that structure, makes that allele less expressive. So the conditions of their expression meaning are they able to produce a protein will very much depend on what type of chemical composition is are. So here, first of all, try and yes, tell me. Uh, Mom, if there is a parent, uh, they both have different colors. So it is possible that the child also may have like, totally different color composition. Totally different color meaning. Did that brown and black? And the huh. child can have blue. The brown and black yes. When I talk about the child, the parent, one parent is brown. One parent is brown. That means the parent is something like this. The other parent is black. That means the parent is something like this. So this is the mother. This is the father. And now that the process of fertilization happens, in the body of the child, this chromosome and this chromosome comes and the child may have the blue color. So when we are talking about the composition, the how the how the chromosome pair up during the course of fertilization? Yes, that is very much possible, and it happens in the human population when we talk about the mother and the father both are having brown eye colors. The child is having uh, maybe black. The mother and the father are uh, black eye. The child is uh, blue. So this also happens when we talk about various different combinations when we talk about sex discrimination. Also, we can understand. So this is first of all to talk about what are the definitions I had learned, we had discussed so far. Character and trait, see that if the definitions are very clear to you. Character and trait. Second pair of terms I have talked about genes and alleles. Alleles are very common definition to be asked in the paper. Alleles. Then we are talking about homozygous, heterozygous. We have talked about a concept of dominant and recessive. See here, we are talking about a concept of dominant and recessive alleles. What is the definition of dominant and recessive alleles? Let us try understanding and write it down also. A dominant allele. What is a dominant allele? I want all of you to write down this. Dominant allele. A dominant allele expresses in presence of a contrasting allele always. Write down. A dominant allele always expresses in presence of a. A dominant allele always expresses. That's a definition. A dominant allele always expresses in presence of a contrasting allele. Expresses in presence of a. Contrasting and it means just the opposite type of an allele. A dominant allele always expresses. A dominant allele always expresses in presence of a contrasting allele. Uh, a dominant, what is the other way to remember the definition? A dominant allele expresses in homozygous condition. Yes or no? Yes. A dominant allele expresses in a heterozygous condition. Yes or no? A dominant allele. Which one is the dominant allele here? Which one is the dominant allele here? Either. So I would say, is this dominant allele expressing in the homozygous condition? Is this dominant allele expressing in this type of a homozygous condition? Yes. Is this dominant allele expressing in this heterozygous condition? Yes. So, what is the other definition or concept to remember always about a dominant allele? A dominant allele will always express in a contrasting also similar condition also. So, what is the sentence we write? A dominant allele always expresses, write down. A dominant allele always expresses, go there. A dominant allele always expresses both in Homozygous, a dominant allele expresses, check the spellings, check the spellings, a dominant allele expresses in the homozygous as well as heterozygous conditions. In homozygous as well as homo 
homozygous as well as heterozygous conditions. Chandisate has a stronger composition. No, that is what we make you understand. But that is not the typical way to write an answer. What is the typical way to write an answer? A dominant allele expresses in presence of a contrasting allele. A dominant allele expresses both in the homozygous and heterozygous condition. Only at a very high level when we are talking about biology at your maybe at the 12th standard, then you learn a little bit about its chemical composition, etc. Then you write that yes, it is because of a different type of a chemical composition. So for that, you should know about the different type of nitrogenous bases, sugar, etc. etc. We should have not studied that in detail. So this is about the concept of dominant allele, recessive allele. Now, tell me here, when I talk yeah, about yeah. the brown color, when I talk about the brown color. When I talk about the blue color, are we able to see the brown color in an individual? Are we able to see the brown color? Are we able to see the brown color? The brown color of the eye, are we able to see? No, but it depends on my direct, like some are very dark. Maybe sunlight is visible. My question is, are you able to See the brown the sunlight hole, yeah. 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 not in our own eyes, but in the other eyes. Not in your own light. Not in your own eyes. So are you able to do all of you must analyze so far your eye color is brown or black? Is it a You all saw for yourself, I suppose. <laughs> Obviously, when you, are sit, when you are standing against light, you cannot see that because it's a pigment down there. It's a pigment there inside. Now, the melanin pigment in, inside, that is what is giving you that eye color. Now, obviously, the amount of the light has to be a little bit more than the expression, than the color you get to see more. But standing in front of the mirror, you can very easily see whether your eye is blue or black or brown. So my question is, not the intensity of light to bedroom mein kare ho, ki hall mein kare ho, not that. Can you see or not? That is my question. Dikhai deta hai, dikhai deta hai. But can you see this? No. no. As I told you just now, sitting in this room, maybe there are eight of us right now having brown eye color. But what type of a combination we have? This may be, some of us may have this combination also. Some of us may have this combination also. But this is what we are able to see. This is what we are not able to see. This perhaps we are just assuming back with the parents or study the chromosome. That's a detailed concept. This is not we are able to see. And we can, have, uh, we can see that with microscopes. Huh, so that is what I say. Not, not you can see, but that's a detailed study. In the field of genetics, the chromosome has to be studied and exactly if you go testing and then okay, so many tests. And then it is understood, okay, your alleles are such and such in the pair of chromosome. But very simple to understand right now. The allele combination that you have in the chromosome, what is this allele combination known as? The allele combination is known as the genotype. And the expression of the alleles that we can see, that is what is known as phenotype. So what is phenotype? For any particular allele pair that we have in our combination. I've been talking about only one gene right now. So in the chromosomes that we have, talk about the third and the ninth and the twelfth and the twentieth, any particular chromosome pair if you pick up, there are thousands of genes like this talking about every one, 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 one character. So every single character has an arrangement of alleles, can be somozygous, can be heterozygous. So now, the arrangement of the alleles we are not able to see. The arrangement of the alleles we will not be able to see. Say, suppose I talk about the height, or say, suppose I talk about the skin color. So like this, there are so many genes and arrangement of the alleles all over the length of the chromosome. By looking at an individual, we can only see the phenotype. Genotype is something that needs detailed study of the parents, of the chromosome generation after generation, then only a estimation or a, a proper knowledge can be obtained. But yes, by looking at the person, we can very well understand whether the person is tall, short, whether the person is having a particular structure of the ear, particular structure of the nose, a particular feature of the eye, particular feature of the hairline. 
that we can see, that we can very much see a visual character, a visual feature, that is what is known as a phenotype. And the allele combination in the pair of chromosome, that is what is known as genotype. And what is the definition of genotype? The pair of alleles in our chromosome for a gene. Right now. What is genotype? The pair of alleles for a gene. The pair of alleles for a gene. The pair of alleles for a gene. Pair of alleles for a gene that regulate. Pair of alleles for a gene that regulate different. That regulate different forms of a character. That regulate different forms of a character are called alleles. What I gave you, what I asked you, what am I asking you to write? The different, uh, read out what you have written. The pair of alleles for a gene that regulate is known as the genotype. The different, the different forms of alleles in a pair of chromosome. Mm -hmm. Is that so? <laughs> the pair of alleles for a gene that regulate different forms of a character is known as the genotype. Again, come across what I told you right now. What is the genotype? The pair of alleles that is regulating the pair of alleles. Sometimes homozygous, or sometimes heterozygous. Pair of alleles, the pair of alleles, the pair of alleles that is regulating the different forms of a character. That is what is known as genotype. Phenotype next. The visual expression. The visual expression. V I S I V L E. Your visual expression. What is phenotype? The visual expression of the visual expression of the genes in our chromosome pairs. Visual expression of genes in our chromosome pairs. Visual expression of genes in our chromosome pairs is known as phenotype. Visual expression of genes in our chromosome pairs is known as phenotype. And the allele combination of our gene that controls various uh, forms of our character, that is what is known as genotype. So now we are already studied about few pairs of words, homozygous, heterozygous, is it clear? Tell me. Dominant, recessive, is it clear? Character and trait, is it clear? Genes and alleles, is it clear? Yeah. The concept of characters and traits is not only applicable for human, it is applicable for all the animal forms and all the, also the plants. Now, if the concept of character and trait is clear, just give me one example for character and trait in case of the plant and the plant kingdom. Height of the plants, okay? And the width of the stem. So give me one example of a character and tell me at least four, three to four traits. Exactly like this, what I picked up an example. Okay. Trees, shrubs, herbs. I'm not asking you any. I said, eight particular character, bolo. Uske do ya ki traits, bolo. For the plant, ki. Color of the plant. Ye ho kya trait? Color of the leaves. Color of the plant. So if I talk about color of the plant, which is a character. Can you tell me three traits of the color of the flower as a character? Red, white, Red, white, yeah. white, yeah. Violet, white yeah. pink. Okay, understanding. Yeah. So this way, if I talk about the shape of the leaf, character, and various shapes of the leaves that we talk about, tapering, broad, or we talk about uh, uh, large, almost, you know, uh, like those apex shape leaves are there. So these different specific names are there for the shapes of the leaves and that would be talked as the traits. Now next is we talk about after all these definitions you are understanding what are the meaning of these definitions. Now we move on to understand that what about the concept of laws of inheritance that was put forward by Mendel. Who was Mendel? Uh, Mendel, a famous biologist who had put forward his observation on experiments with plants. 
And now that we talk about uh, Mendel, remember the name, you are asked questions. Uh, when we are talking about Gregor Johann Mendel, Gregor Johann Mendel. Now, please uh, take care that you refer to Gregor Johann Mendel whenever you are asked in the biologist who had put forward laws of heredity, laws of inheritance. Unka naam karan mat karo. Mendel ko Mendelik mat liko. Most of you do that every time, batches after batches. So, hybrid nahi bana. So, this is Mendel and Mendel to write. And this person, Gregor Johann Mendel, a uh, little bit uh, you are supposed to remember. He had performed a large number of experiments on what type of plants? Bees. Garden bee plants. Write down the common name. You are to write down garden bee. Write down the common name of the plants on which Mendel had performed his experiments. Garden bee. Hai. Write down the scientific name. Then you are supposed to write down Pison sativa. Check the spelling. Pison sativa. The rules of nomenclature. You have not studied nomenclature as suppose last year. No? You have studied no. So you are supposed to write this way. Uh, what are the rules of nomenclature? If you write uh, this S like this, marks will be deducted. If you don't underline, marks will be deducted. Because there's a particular rule of writing down the scientific names. How do we write? These are two parts of the name basically. And uh, what are these two parts of the name since you all have not studied the details of this? This part of the name is known as the generic name. And this part of the name is known as the specific name. Uh, what is the biological name of human? Are you aware? Homo sapiens. So exactly the same thing. When I talk about Homo sapiens, if I write, uh, is it correct? No, it is wrong. I'm not supposed to write capital S here. It is small s here and underline both. Then it is correct here. So these are some specific rules. There are many rules of nomenclature. At least this one or two you have to follow when you write out the answer. So what is it for this one more question? Always take a note. I'm talking about write down the biological name. Then only you write this one. Python set I can take a note. What is the spelling? S-A-T-I-B-U-M. And the generic and the specific name. And also underline this is not to be written. So this is what you only write down. Common name, specific name, biological name. Now, what was uh, his experiments about? What was Mendel's experiments about? Uh, Mendel, actually, whenever you talk about the details of his, uh, the history part, uh, Mendel actually happens to be a monk. And, uh, huh? He was a monk and he was performing the experiments. Experiment, see, where the interest of people get diverted. So now we are talking about he was a monk and every time in his monastery, various different type of plants he used to observe. And uh, sometimes, uh, what happened? It's great. See the way he's sitting, getting cold. <laughs> I genuinely asked him. I'm genuinely asking. He, ah. that, right? he was holding his head like this. Itna, itna, why are you into social service right now? <laughs> Try to lie or back and make a chat. So? So now, when we are talking about uh, the reasons why we are to understand that Mendel and what is the relation I was telling you just, just now that Mendel was a monk in his monastery, he was studying, uh, he always uh, used to look into plants, uh, gardening, and all those things normally that they do. Uh, but suddenly, he started uh, developing certain interest in growing plants, observing their characteristics, and few plants were one such character, one such type of a plant where he suddenly started observing that apart from the rest of the plants, this were one type of a plant where different contrasting traits every time in the plants were observed. If I talk about the rose plants, if I talk about the most commonly grown flowering plants in a garden, we would generally see flower, if it is pink, every, every generation the flowers are generally pink. If it is yellow, hibiscus, if I talk about every, every generation it is uh, yellow. And if I talk about the height of the plant, more or less the same every generation. The shape of the leaf, more or less the same every generation. He somehow noticed that in case of the pea plants, it is not like that. In one generation, the plants were uh, having some uh, purple flowers. In another generation, it was white. In one generation, the plants were tall. In another generation, they were short. In one generation, the seed color was something. In another generation, the seed color was something different. So this somehow uh, you know, uh, created a lot of interest in inquisitiveness in him. And he started growing those plants separately. He started growing those plants separately, uh, looking into the generation of the plants separately. 
and then whatever outcome in couple of years he had gone through whatever observation in couple of years he had gone through that is what he put forward in the form of laws and later interestingly it was found that it is those concepts of heredity and genetics which is not only applicable to the p plant of quite a number of plants it is also true for the human population and so many other animal forms so if you try understanding that what were the reasons for which mendel started practicing his experiments what was the reason that mendel selected pea plants for his experiments and not any other plants uh, number 1 the life span of these plants was short the life span of the pea plants the life span of the pea plants are short what does this mean what do you understand when i write life span is short life span is short meaning Uh, when the if the when the person when Mendel is uh, trying to grow the two plants, growing two plants, uh, he gets to see the next generation plants in a period of a week or a couple of weeks. So in a couple of weeks, he can see the new generation plants every time. In a couple of months, he can see the new generation plants every time, and then he can go for breeding, and then he can go for cross pollination. So this is giving him a clear observation of different type of characters. and that is perhaps one big reason when we are talking about experimenting in the mango or experimenting in the banyan we have never heard whenever we are talking about experiments related to any different type of plants it is always the balsam it is always the crotons it is always the pea plants why because the life span is comparatively shorter and on top of that life span shorter means what you can get number of generations in a very short period of time yes Like life span is short, that means they grow quicker than other plants. They become they grow quick, they become mature quick, and then the process of uh, pollination, fertilization, much faster, and new generation of plants come faster. If I talk about a mango plant, it grows in one year, then the next year flowering. I talk about the banyan, two three years non reproduction, and then these plants are actually surviving for many years. And the, the the process by which they start growing new plants is almost about three four years of establishment. It's not the same for me. In one or two weeks they grow fast. In another month, the new generation plants have come up. Ah, uh, is this the only reason? No, lifespan is so, uh, very short. Apart from that, ah, uh, these plants are self pollinating. Now, when I say these plants are self pollinating. Uh, name the reproductive parts of a plant. Uh, name the reproductive parts of a plant. The flower. flower, flower. The flower already had studied in the concept of reproduction. The flower is the reproductive part. Now let me talk about the flower as a reproductive part. And I'm saying, pea plants are self-pollinating. Understand? If the pea plants are self-pollinating, then the flowers are unisexual or bisexual. Bisexual. That means these flowers have both female and male. What are the male and the female organs of a flower known as? Male and female organs are known as. Male part of the flower is known as. Stamen and the female part known as. Carpel or the pistil. Carpel or the pistil, female part. Stamen the male part. So we are saying. If this is the first characteristic that we are talking about, that uh, the lifespan is short and self-pollinating, bisexual, you erase this because it's from here. What are the four reasons why Mendel chose the pea plants? And then we'll look into the laws of inheritance also today. We'll try to complete with at least one or two laws. मेरा ही होगा 